this is Tina from Shabby Tabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're here for another one of our mass making sessions and I thought what we could do today is just mass make some decorative strips to put down the edge of our pages or you know I mean I guess they don't have to go down the edge of your pages wherever wherever you want to put them really is absolutely fine. So just making some scrappy edges basically so using up some of our scraps and things like that um, to have some ready-made uh, decorative edges and things for your junk journals. So I'm just going to put those behind me. And what I've brought along with me is a whole bunch of different papers and things. So including things like vellum and I've got sheet music and all sorts of things. I've got some napkin um, paper, which actually I'm not going to use this one, I think, because it's probably a bit thick. But um, I've actually got, yeah, a whole bunch of different things, book pages and all sorts of things. And all we're going to, sorry, I just knocked the table, not a good start, is it? Um, all we're going to do is just, you know, layer up some pieces and things like that. Now, obviously, in my previous ones um, that I made, you know, several weeks back or months back, I can't really remember how long ago it was, I stitched them and I'm aware that not everybody has a sewing machine. So probably what I'm going to do is kind of glue the basic pieces down and then, of course, it would be up to you whether you wanted to stitch yours or not, depending on whether you have a sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, I mean, you can always hand, um, you know, hand mark or hand draw some sort of faux stitching on, um, you know, with something like a Sharpie marker. Or if you don't want to do that, then what you could do is if you've got any stamps that, you know, just lend themselves to some sort of decorative edging. Um, so it doesn't have to be like a faux stitch, but I mean, you know, maybe you've got a ruler stamp or maybe you've got some script or something like that. And what you could do is kind of mask a section of your strip to stamp down the middle, um, something like that. So I will try and, um, yeah, demonstrate that kind of thing. So we'll perhaps we'll try and demonstrate that kind of thing, you know, first of all. So obviously I have a whole bunch of scraps here and hopefully this is going to prove to be quite a good scrap busting exercise so all I'm going to do is for this one I'm just going to tear this edge down because I don't really like the whole straight straight edges obviously if you prefer straight edges that's fine too um, but you could you know you could also use maybe a tear ruler or something like that if you would prefer them straighter then obviously mine are <laughs> you know going to be turning out so for instance this one and what I thought we'd do is just do layered, um, you know, scrappy edges. So for instance, this, I'm just going to layer it with a little bit of sheet music. So yeah, I'm going to come, I think, over this side. So all I'm going to do is glue it down because, of course, you know, to include, um, you know, those of you without sewing machines. So we're just going, whoops, going to glue this down. And, you know, I mean, of course, what you could do is bulk make these gluing and then you could move over to your sewing machine and then stitch them afterwards. So, you know, completely sort of flexible how you want to do them. So I'm just placing that on there. And then all I'm going to do is obviously tear that down here. like that just tear it around here and I'm just going to tear down along here as well okay so that's kind of my piece now as I was saying if you don't want to stitch yours or you don't have a sewing machine to be able to stitch yours what I think might work and please you know this is just kind of trial and error I haven't obviously tested this out but if you mask your piece so for instance if I just grab some book page in with a straight edge like that I mean to be honest it doesn't even need to be a straight edge you could have a sort of curlier wavy edge to it I guess so perhaps we'll try that with with this kind of curlier edge as well because otherwise it's just going to be completely straight which might not be you know might not be quite so good so I'm going to kind of mask it like that. I'm not going to tape it down or anything like that. I'm just going to hope for the best. So, you know, <laughs> it may just turn out to be a complete and utter disaster. But then what you can do is take some ink 
I'm going to use my stays on because that's, you know, that's my favourite ink to use. Let me grab my black so it shows up nicely. Okay. And I don't know what stamp actually to use that's going to be best in here. Uh, well, we could try either. We could try some script or we could try a kind of swirly type pattern. Oh, decisions, decisions. I can't decide now. Um, oh, this is a tough one. I, I don't know now which is going to look the nicest. Um, hmm. Well, I'm going to use a swirl, I think. Yeah, I'm going to use a swirl. But funnily enough, while I was just looking to decide what to use, I've also got a long sort of flower here, or a taller flower, as you can see. So you could take a stamp like this and do that up the middle. I mean, basically, you know, you're just trying to replace where in our previous ones I'd done a zigzag stitch. You're just putting something on so it's not completely plain. So, you know, just a tallish stamp of any variety, you know, would be absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to go for going to go for my swirl I'm sorry I'm still having a look through because I'm wondering whether I could have done anything else but you know like if I had a line of some sort whether I could line up some sort of lines in here um I mean I'm sure that there's different alternatives I mean like here I've got a sort of postcard stamp if I just stamp an edge of this down to show you so what I could do is try and stamp just that sort of section there this may go horribly wrong so I'm going to I think close my gap much more like that okay and then just going to stamp like that oops so going through the middle of that stamp or of that strip sorry I mean obviously my my stamp block is very dirty so it's very hard to see where I'm stamping so you know it's possibly not even really kind of meeting the other piece but I mean all you're trying to do is get an effect oops that was terrible stamping oh my gosh and again, um, where you would have had some stitches. So I'm not doing very well with this one. Right, okay. So obviously you can see I have mucked that up completely because obviously I couldn't really see through my stamp block. But again, you know, <laughs> fear not <laughs> because we can just cover that up. So obviously the rest of these I'm going to actually mess make. I'm not going to be kind of mucking about but because I've mucked this up I just feel you know I need to kind of demonstrate something to be able to cover this up to kind of give you some ideas of if something like this happens with your piece you know don't feel like oh no I'm gonna have to bin it because you know most things can be rescued so for instance here I mean I've got this little sort of image of some birds I'm not saying that that's perfect. It doesn't, you know, in my opinion, doesn't really go particularly brilliantly with this. Um, let me see if I've got something else that I could use that might go better. Uh, well, I've got my... No, I don't want to use that. Um, hold on. Oh, this isn't a good start for the video, is it? Um, okay. Oh, come on. Just looking through my kind of ephemera type pieces. So, I mean, I've got this kind of cameo piece here I mean she goes better she's a little bit on the small side but actually perhaps I use the grey one okay let's go for the grey one because it's better size wise so just going to ink that up so it's a bit less grey okay and then you know you could put that now I wouldn't probably put it dead central because that to me just looks like it's been made to look dead central so I'd probably put it off to one side. Um, I mean, I personally prefer it that side, but probably this side is better because it's covering up where I've mucked up that stamping a bit more. 
Or of course I could put it this side and then have something else here, maybe some lace or some book page or maybe a postage stamp or something like that covering that up. So, you know, just to give you some kind of ideas really of the types of things that you can do, you know, if you make a mistake with something like that. And obviously, again, you know, that was just using this postcard stamp and just using or picking up the edge of this. So if you haven't got like a straight stamp or, a, you know, I've got, you know, very lucky, I've got a um, stitching, you know, run of stitches stamp. If you don't have something like that, just look through your stamps and the chances are you may just find that you've got something with a border or an edge or something like that. Or if not, you know, like I say, you could always use script or something. All you're trying to do is replace where the stitches would be, just so you've got a bit of, you know, dimension and kind of detail really in your strip. Right, so I'm going to move this to one side and I'm just going to continue in that same vein, just layering up different pieces. So, you know, it's quite a good scrap buster. Uh, yeah, scrap buster. And obviously you're then going to have lots of side strips that then you can just use in your project. You know, they're all going to just be ready to grab when you come to do a project. So I'm going to just again now layer this onto the book page and then tear around the book page. And then, you know, I will probably stitch mine, you know, maybe after the video or something. And all I'm literally going to do is like a zigzag stitch straight down the middle of my piece that's stuck onto the underneath layer. So super, super, super easy, but really great way to use up some of your scraps and pieces. So, you know, I don't probably need to talk you through anymore because my gosh, how much easier could it possibly get? Um, but yeah, they're just going to be a nice kind of handy thing to have to hand to be able to kind of layer up, you know, because you could obviously pop these onto belly bands and things as well, you know, use them kind of however that you like. But I just think they're quite a nice, good little scrap buster, aren't they? So that's that one. Okay, so I'm just going to go down using the rest of my scraps. And, you know, they're obviously super quick. So, I mean, hopefully I'm going to get through a ton of scraps doing this. Um, and like I say, I mean, I've bought along some vellum and things like that, that, you know, I've had in my stash for a really long time and haven't ever used. So I'm going to kind of use some of that. I've also bought along things like I've got this map page, which again, had it in my stash for a long time. It's from a vintage book and I can just kind of use that as well as a, like a background as well. So, you know, lots and lots of different um, options that we can use. So, yeah, so that's kind of today's um, little project, I thought. So, yep, hope that you're um, <laughs> going to join me and have fun making your little scrappy strips for the edges of your pages. So, they're just, you know, a nice way to produce decorative edges, I guess. So we can just relax in now and just have a nice catch up. So I hope everyone's doing really well. I hope you've all had a good week. I've had um, a bit of a mixed week, really. I've, yeah, had a bit of um, anxiety and things and it always leaves you slightly struggling and, um, you know, your confidence kind of levels are um, knocked a little bit. So, yeah, I've been a little bit sort of a little bit wobbly this week. Um, well, you know, the week just gone. So hopefully it's going to all improve this week, I'm hoping, because, you know, it's not really nice when you kind of feel that way. But, you know, I know that lots of you lovely ladies have commented that you too, you know, suffer with anxiety and things like that. And um, yeah, thank you so much for all of your lovely messages because, um, you know, it's not a very nice thing to kind of struggle with, is it? to struggle with is it and um yeah it's nice to know that you're not alone sometimes when you know other people kind of share that they too have suffered or are suffering the same sort of things that you are so yeah but aside from that I'm doing fine I've had a little bit of a cold um still still got a cold I mean I just get colds at the drop of a hat to be honest so um Yep, no doubt I'm going to spend most of this winter with one sort of cold or other. 
And you don't have to put your pieces dead in the center. I mean, this one, as you can see, I made a really big um, muck up of tearing the vellum. And that's fine. What I'll do is glue this one kind of off to the edge, I think. And, um, you know, that way it's still perfectly usable. So I'll just do it like this instead. You know, and then you've just got a few different type of looks as well. Like that, okay. And then what I might do is actually tear this piece down a bit because it's sticking out so far. So uh, I'll just tear that down a bit like that. Okay. Yeah, so of course, um, you know, having, having a cold at the moment, you know, your first thought is, oh gosh, I hope it's just a cold. You know, hope it's not anything worse. So, um, yeah, but I mean, fingers crossed, I seem to have had it for several days now or probably just over a week, actually. And it seems to be following the pattern that my normal colds do follow. So hopefully that's kind of all it is. Um, yeah, so I hope that everybody else is staying safe and well. We are having strange, you know, strange things over here in the UK. Um, you know, isolated kind of cities are in lockdowns now and things like that. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously we had a bit of a, you know, break over the summer from the virus and it's, you know, unfortunately now picking back up again, as I guess it was bound to happen, wasn't it? And um, yeah, it's uh, obviously a worrying time, but certainly, I mean, some cities I think are, you know, experiencing very high numbers. So it's not a good situation at all. And of course, you know, I guess eventually it's going to spread everywhere, you know, across the whole country again. So I guess it will be here here as well soon. I think we're categorised as a medium risk area at the moment. Um, you know, but I guess, you know, there's no, no telling how long it could be before we're perhaps moved on to a high risk area. I don't know. Um... But yeah, it's not a good scenario. There we go. And it's quite nice mixing up the um, papers. I mean, a lot of these are just old scrapbook papers and things like that, you know, that I've kind of partially used. But, you know, it's nice to be able to mix them with other things, isn't it? So yeah, quite a good, quite a good scrap busting one, this one, I think. So this one here, I'm just going to kind of tear it down here. And I'm making mine like full size, i.e., you know, the whole of the length of a journal page, which I tend to do A4 pages. But of course, you know, if you wanted to do different size little scrappy edges, then you could. Um, you know, there's no sort of rules against doing that. I'm just doing mine because this is the size of my scraps, basically. So it just makes sense to do, you know, these kind of bigger ones really and obviously by doing the bigger ones I'm using quite a good amount of scraps as well into the process so it's quite quite good might do that one with a bit of book page as well so I just stick that down here oh and I've got an apology to make as well so yeah I like I say had a bit of anxiety last week had a bit of a kind of you know wobble on I think it was Thursday or it could have been Wednesday I can't remember which and um I had done some videoing during the day and then obviously at night I wasn't kind of focusing properly and concentrating properly because I was kind of distracted and Oh, annoyingly, I uploaded my videos that I had done during the day and, you know, I'm sure as a lot of you saw, suddenly I had multiple videos going up. Now, normally when I upload my videos, I kind of upload them as, you know, what's sort of specified as private. So they're private until I can then edit the thumbnail and kind of, you know, change the description and all of those kinds of things. And what happened, obviously, that day was obviously I uploaded them without doing any of that stuff. They weren't meant to go up or anything else ready to go up. They had no description, they had no title as, as such anyway. Um, and what's really annoying is like one of them was like a part three. 
um, from something that obviously is going to have a part one and a part two. Um, so yeah, I obviously, when I woke up, somebody had so kindly messaged me and said, oh, you know, don't know whether you meant this to happen, but you know, multiple videos of yours have come up overnight. And, um, yeah, thank you so much because obviously without that, I wouldn't have noticed necessarily, you know, for quite a while. So as soon as I woke up, I obviously took those other videos down or, you know, I hid them again made them private again um but I mean obviously the shame of it is a lot of you have obviously now seen them one of which was going to be this week's tidy Friday um so I will be putting that up on Friday because obviously you know although a lot of people watched it not everybody watched it if you see what I mean um so yeah and then obviously in a few weeks time when my ring bound journal video comes up then obviously that part three will go up then as well so yeah very very annoying and you know i apologize to those people who um you know felt that they were perhaps bombarded with my videos suddenly or alternatively i apologize if anybody actually went to go back to a video or something and then it was missing it's because i obviously hadn't meant to upload it and therefore i had to then hide it again so yeah very very annoying and you know completely and utterly my own fault i don't know quite what happened why you know why the setting had changed because normally my setting is just by default private and um you know for some reason that day it just wasn't and it just kind of yeah had changed to public and therefore went up so um yeah very 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 annoying and uh you know, I wouldn't have obviously intended to do that because, of course, it had, you know, no description, it had no title, it had no anything. And what was worse was, obviously, those videos were meant for other times and, um, yeah, annoyingly, you know, they weren't then, you know, they went up too soon. And so technically now some people will have already seen them when they do go up. So, yeah, just one of those things, really, but... It was quite annoying, so. Oops. Okay. So these are quite fun to make, actually. They're quite sort of therapeutic because they're just, you know, a bit mindless and, um, yeah, don't require an awful lot of, obviously, concentration other than just, you know, toning the colours together. They're quite a nice activity to do. And I mean, although they look obviously super boring and, you know, some people are probably tuning into this video for the first time and thinking, what on earth, you know, why is she showing that? Um, but they're quite a nice staple kind of thing to have in. If I just grab in something that would act like a journal page, I haven't really got one on the go, but if I just kind of pull one in here like this, you know, I mean, doesn't that just look gorgeous? If that was just going to be run down the edge of a page and then of course you know just pulling back in those little frames or something decorating just that up on the edge of a page obviously if this had the zigzag stitch in or alternatively obviously you know if you haven't got the sewing machine and you just used something like this and you know layered it up like that i mean what a lovely way to finish a page they're just really really simple and really really nice aren't they so, you know, they're quite a good, easy thing to have in because then it's going to make things easier, you know, to make things. So, yeah, I might do another one of these, actually, because obviously I've got the rest of this scrap of paper. Oh, I had to go and buy my daughter a new school coat at the weekend. Um, oh... It just, I mean, shops don't seem to be back to their usual kind of supply level. So actually finding things is still quite difficult. And um, yeah, I'd looked around in a couple of shops. Couldn't really find one that was going to be okay. A lot of them seem to be jackets. And, you know, of course, that's not really great when it gets really cold because, you know, her bum's not going to be covered. Um, you know, or even her lower back. I mean, if she then because it's, you know, sometimes bike to school. If she's on her bike, her back's going to get cold. So, um, you know, a slightly longer one was 
you know, hopefully would be better. So I managed to get her one in the end, but yeah, just not really a great selection this year. I don't think shops are maybe able to get their, you know, usual levels of, well, supplies, I guess. It's um, a bit of a shame, really. But anyway, she seems pleased with it. It's pink, it's got fur around the hood, so... You know, that's the main thing, isn't it? And a lot of them also, they have those detachable hoods. And she had one of those last year with a detachable hood. And it was just detachable with Velcro. And actually, to be honest, the hood was constantly dropping off. Which then, you know, that's just useless, isn't it? If the hood's constantly dropping off. So um, I wanted to get one really, <clears throat> you know, with a fixed hood. So that that wasn't going to be an issue because the other thing was sometimes the hood wasn't falling off but it would come unattached in some places and not in others and then of course it would kind of catch her hair in it so you know again not not great so yeah it was um you know I just wanted to get one with an attached hood and that was slightly longer so um yeah we managed to find one anyway so but yeah, there wasn't definitely, wasn't a very good choice around. Okay. And, you know, also you could layer more than two layers on these. I mean, I'm making these very basic and simple, but of course, if you wanted to have more layers, you could always do, you know, three layers or something I mean probably not using the scrapbook paper because the scrapbook paper tends to be quite thick um this for instance this scrapbook paper is quite a thick paper so I wouldn't necessarily use you know two or three layers on there obviously the vellum is very very thin um I'm going to bin this I know it's very pretty but to be honest I'm not going to use that I'm going to get rid of it because I'm trying to be a bit better on keeping on top of my scraps. Um, but for instance, here we've got obviously the sheet music. <clears throat> and if I use that with, well, I've got this scrapbook paper, which, you know, it's seen better days, obviously. And this was some, I think it was K and Company paper. But although it's scrapbook paper, it's quite thin. So it's much thinner than this one here. So this one, I probably could get away with doing like three layers. So let's just, again, tear this down. Like that. And we're just going to, oops. And then we're just going to put this like that. And then what we could do is put like maybe a very skinny strip of, well, we could even kind of like double it back up with more sheet music. I might just tear this down a bit more. Or something like some book page or something like that on the inside, or well, not the inside, but you know, the top layer. So something like that. I mean, that looks really pretty. So, I mean, again, you know, you can just play around with these and just literally build them up, you know, exactly as you like. And um, they're just going to be a little fun thing to have on hand to put into your journals. So just glue this one down in place here. Okay. Like that. And then this little skinny slither oops no not that skinny slither I thought well that's really strange because there's barely any sheet music showing on that that was the piece I tore off so not that one <laughs> not that one which would have been pretty pointless putting on because there wasn't really an awful lot going on on there but this piece okay we can just layer up there so I'm just going to again just glue down here like that. Okay. <clears throat> and we just then, oops, pop that down on there like that. 
and that just creates you know a bit of a different look doesn't it and looks gorgeous like that so again just then tear it down on the side <clears throat> like that and, and this one like this and then obviously I can just trim that down I mean it's probably still too long to go in a journal but you know just so you kind of see the the idea really there so you know just play around and kind of layer them up and you know do kind of I don't know different things really I think they're all um, going to be quite nice. So again, just going to use this little piece now. I mean, I somehow naively thought that I was going to get through this whole, this whole scrap pile, but I'm just having a look at the camera and I seem to be like 30 minutes in already. So I clearly was overestimating just how much I thought that I was going to get done here. But uh, yeah. <laughs> always overestimating I think how much I think I'm going to get done okay so just going to pop that down on there goodness knows why I thought I was going to or how I thought I was going to get through this whole pile I mean honestly how on earth did I think that I have no idea okay So, and I always film, or, you know, tend to mostly film these um, mass making videos on the Monday to upload, obviously, for you guys on the Tuesday. And, um, yeah, so I know that today, my video today is doing the glue book folio. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I'm filming this, this in the morning, so... You know, I haven't obviously finished replying to comments or anything like that. But um, yeah, I hope that you guys are enjoying that video. It's going to have several parts to it. And um, yeah, it's just a really fun and different project to do. It's going to be probably just interspersed with some of the finishing off projects videos. Because I didn't want to upload those all in one, you know, all at once. Because obviously... I think people just get bored of watching the same type of thing all the time so by interspersing it hopefully it will be a little bit more um interesting so there'll be you know sometimes it will be like finishing off projects sometimes it will be the folio sometimes it might be something else completely so um yeah as you know i kind of try and film ahead purely because if i have an off week like last week where i really wasn't feeling you know too much myself um, you know, sort of, I don't know, confidence wise and things like that, then obviously I didn't then have to be pressuring myself to do videos. I mean, obviously, as you know, I did do videos. The fact that I uploaded those couple publicly that night, but, you know, I didn't have to be pressuring and stressing myself over doing them. So, um, you know, or if for instance, I felt really unwell with my cold and things, then, you know, it gives me a little bit of a breather. So, yeah. Obviously, that whole folio I have filmed. Um, and, yeah, I will be doing the flip through of that soon. It was a super fun project to make. I did learn a few lessons, um, which I will obviously be sharing with you as we go along making the folio. Just things that I kind of, in hindsight, thought mm, that didn't work so well and I wouldn't necessarily do that again. So I'll be sharing with you, you know the things that obviously I kind of in hindsight thought mm, that wasn't great um, as that video goes along okay again I'm going to be really good and I'm going to bin this I mean this obviously is perfect for like a journaling card or something like that but to be honest my scraps are such that I just yeah I need to need to discipline myself and kind of not hold on to just literally anything and everything because um of course, I will never get my scraps under control that way, will I? So, yeah, that's now, that's now gone. It's in the bin. Okay, should we have this piece here? Yep. Oh, and I had um, a question from somebody um, asking why don't I wear my wedding rings? 
Um, so, as you know, I absolutely love my junky rings. Um, and, you know, I'm so lucky because lots of you have been so kind and gifted me, um, you know, some junky rings and things, especially recently. This is a new one, in fact, that I have been gifted recently in a happy mail. The video will go up again. It will go up in a few weeks. Um, but, yeah, so I just received this last week. Absolutely love this ring. Um, so... <laughs> Yep, I love junky rings, but partially this all came about really. I mean, I've always been drawn to junky, junky rings and things like that anyway. But also in addition to that, um, I mean, quite a long time ago, actually, probably about 15 years ago. That It might not be as long as that. I don't know. Quite a long time anyway. Certainly a good 10 years ago. Um, I just seemed to not be able to get my wedding ring Um on and off of my finger um you know well on well on or off yeah so it all started really that you know I'd try and pull it off and it wouldn't come over my knuckles and um you know obviously then I'm panicking and trying to get it off and obviously my finger was kind of getting hot and sort of swelling and it was making it worse and worse um and that's just a horrible uncomfortable feeling and you know I like to take my rings off you know at night when I go to bed or you know things like that so um yeah, gradually. And then what would happen was the next time that I then would try and put it on, obviously it would be even worse because my finger would maybe be, I don't know whether it would be like slightly swollen or something from the last time that I did that. So then I couldn't even get my ring on in the first place. So I didn't want to just wear nothing. Um, and, you know, luckily, I mean, I absolutely love junky rings anyway. So that's how I kind of took to took to wearing junky type rings instead or, you know, in place of. Um, and, you know, I'm not fussed. I don't mind which fingers that they fit on. Um, you know, I don't obviously wear them on my thumb or my little fingers or anything like that. But, you know, just either of these two fingers is fine. Um, and, you know, sometimes they might fit on this finger and sometimes they fit on this finger. I guess depending on how my knuckle is behaving that day. Um, so yeah, to, to that person who asked me why that, you know, why I never wear them, um, no problem. I'm more than happy to answer that question. And yeah, that's the reason why. So, and weirdly enough, I did go in a jeweler's once um, inquiring whether there was anything that they could do, you know, like if they made my rings bigger but I didn't want them so big that they would then be obviously falling off. Um, and the lady kind of said to me it was apparently like something to do with like an early arthritis kind of that makes your knuckles swell like that. Which I mean, obviously this was quite a you know long time ago, as I say, about 10 years ago. Oh, that just sent me into panic. And I thought, oh no, you know, what? Get an arthritis already. Um, so yeah, that kind of sent me into a panic really. But yeah, I mean, now I couldn't even tell you the last time I tried to get my wedding rings on, to be honest, um, you know, super long time ago. But I suspect that I probably, you know, would not very often be able to get them on, to be honest, you know, I, um, yeah, I probably more often than not wouldn't be able to get them on. So, you know, that's fine. I I will stick with my junky rings and hey, you know, on the plus side, it's great because they're all different and, you know, I love wearing them. So, um, yeah, and I love it even more now that obviously so many people have been so kind and gifted me some lovely, lovely, lovely rings. And actually, I've got a happy mail coming up in which... Um, Somebody has been so, so kind. The same lady who gifted me this um, was so, so kind. She even made me a ring. So her name's Serena. And um, so, Serena, if you're watching, thank you so much. Obviously, I have opened your happy mail. I have messaged you and things. Um, but yeah, I mean, that video won't go up for you know a few weeks yet. But um, yeah, thank you so, so much. She actually made me a ring, which I wore literally, you know, most of last week. And um, I mean, how wonderful is that, to be honest? So every cloud has a silver lining, doesn't it? You know, obviously, if my wedding ring had still <laughs> been getting, you know, been able to get on and off, I never would have even started wearing probably the junky rings in the first place. 
so yeah that's where that all came about and actually somebody else has so kindly sent me a whole envelope full of rings now I haven't actually even opened it yet I've opened it enough to know that that's what that envelope is um but I haven't had time to actually go through the envelope yet um but oh my gosh how exciting because it's literally full full of rings so oh my goodness I'm going to be just like wearing different rings all the time even more even more than I do generally so yeah thank you so much and I often get um asked where do I buy them so I mean to be honest I buy them wherever I can find them really um over here in the UK strangely quite often I you know have managed to get them in the supermarket in the supermarket that we have here called Sainsbury's seems to oddly enough sell the best selection of them not always but just you know every now and then they'll just have a whole you know really good selection um so I sometimes get them from the supermarket um aside from there I mean I just get them literally wherever I can find them um but I also have been very lucky because when we've been on holiday for the last couple of years I've managed to get some sometimes when we're on holiday and actually last year when we went to hmm, I'm trying to think we went to Italy and we had a day out in um oh gosh what's the name Verona Verona and while we were there I mean what a beautiful 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 place I have to say all these absolutely gorgeous little streets and things I mean it was heaving and you know I'm not over, <coughs> over keen on it when it's so busy but it was worth you know worth it being busy because it was so lovely there but down these little streets there was this incredible jewelry store which honestly had the most amazing selection of junky rings that I had ever seen ever I wish that I could remember the name of the shop because honestly I mean, it would be worth going back there just literally to be able to go in that shop it was just the most gorgeous 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 rings so while we were there I bought I think about six rings from that shop um to bring home with me so yeah really 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 lovely rings that um you can get there so yeah I'm a little bit obsessed with them to be honest I have to say because they've become a bit like a sort of collecting thing for me I yeah I kind of almost collect them <clears throat> but they are very 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 fun oh also so sorry if my hands are slightly slightly inky still I was um <laughs> doing some inking the other day again without gloves <laughs> for another video which will be coming up um you know in a few weeks time but yeah so I was playing with inks which is just always a recipe for disaster for me why I can't just be like a normal person and wear glasses is beyond me but yeah for some reason I just don't and um <laughs> My daughter, because it was yesterday morning, and um, my daughter was just like, Mom, look at your hands. I said, I know, I know. So, yeah, even she's kind of mortified. And to be honest, I mean, she loves getting messy. So for her to be mortified, my gosh, that's just not good. Okay. Okay. Oops, let me just pop this down. I'm also trying to do um, another sort of Etsy restock as well. So I'm hoping that that will also be this week. It might end up not being this week, but again, it's just going to kind of depend on time-wise really, um, how I get on. So we'll kind of see. Oh, and thank you so much to everyone who's given me their lovely feedback over my new upload time. I mean, aside from obviously the night where I 
mucked it up and then released multiple videos um you know touch wood hopefully it's all kind of working out better because a few people have said oh thank goodness you know i don't have to stay up now um late and things like that so yeah hopefully it's kind of going okay for most people so thank you so much i do appreciate everyone's feedback for that it's really good of you right so i'm just having a look at the time now let me see oops it's 45 minutes so yeah pretty good okay and i have a ton a ton i have to say look at my scraps box yeah still still just as big really you wouldn't even know that i had had made anything from that but let's move that to one side so let's count up how many we've done we've done one two three four five six seven eight Oops, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So definitely a nice quick one to do. So as I say, I'm going to actually stitch down the middle of most of mine. Um, well, probably all of mine. Um, like I say, I haven't, obviously, for the purposes of, you know, not everyone has a sewing machine. So I might go and just do that just for one now and then come back and decorate it up to kind of just show you some ideas okay so i'm back from the sewing machine and as you can see i just zigzagged it in black thread i thought the black was really nice because it obviously you know it shows up really nicely on there and i'm just going to ink that up okie dokie <clears throat> Oh, and thank you so much also to everybody who's been so lovely and supportive during my Tidy Fridays. I mean, obviously, there's lots more tidying still to do, so they're still going to be going on. But I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of your wonderful comments. It's so encouraging and just lovely. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I'm so excited. I know that a few people said, oh, you can hear the excitement in your voice. Literally, I'm so excited. I mean... Wow, I have not been able to tuck my chair in under my desk for like the longest time. So to be able to even just tuck my chair in is like amazing. And yeah, I've now got all this space. Although I say, oh, I've now got all this space. I currently don't have because I've kind of got things all in piles around me. I've got some bits for my Etsy restock. I've got, oh, I don't know, some other bits ready for another video and some other bits for another video drying. So yeah, I mean, actually right this second, I actually am surrounded again, but you know, they're just odd pieces now. So the underneath of my desk is completely free, which is wonderful. So yeah, thank you so, so much. I can't tell you, it just feels so great. And I know that some people have said, oh, you've inspired me, you know, to um, do mine. So yeah, honestly, I mean, it's not my cup of tea either, sorting and organising, but I can't tell you how good it feels once you do. So uh, yeah, kind of, honestly, it's worth just setting aside just that kind of half hour to an hour each week and just, you know, just having a blitz. And I'm so trying now to keep on top of my stuff, I can't tell you. Um, you know, which again, that doesn't necessarily come naturally to me because, of course, you know, I like to just rush on and do something else. I don't really want to be tidying up when I could be crafting. But I think it's key, you know, I think it is the key for me to try and just, you know, stay on top of the mess in the first place because, yeah, it could very easily you know, get completely kind of swamped again. Okay, so I might do something like this. It looks quite different for me. Um, I don't know which butterfly I prefer. So I'm just going to glue this, this lace down here with the hot glue. So, whoops, just knocked my hot glue over. So just go down there. Okay. Now, do we like the gold butterfly or the brown? I mean, I like the brown because it's kind of keeping it in the colours. Let me just stand up and look down on it. But then the gold kind of lifts it and makes it really kind of pretty and, oh, I don't know, just lighter and fresher. What do we think? Oh, it's such a tough decision, honestly. Oh, I wish that you could all... um 
shout at me which you think is best. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I really love them both. That's the problem. I do honestly really love them both. Do you know, I might do that on this one. So I'm going to do this one without doing the stitching. And that way we've done, you know, one without stitching as well for those of you who don't have a sewing machine. So I'm just going to go down here like that. Okay. And then if I just take my little butterfly there again, I wonder if I've got some more of that lace because that it's a kind of grey brown. It just goes really well. I thought that was the same, but it's not. Hold on a second. Let me see if I've got anything else that might just do the trick. No, nope, not so far. Let me pull out my lace drawer. I mean, even just that, you know, just having my lace all kind of organised in that drawer, it's just awesome to be able to just pull out that drawer and it all be just tidy and together. It feels really, really good. Right, got this gorgeous lace which was gifted to me in Happy Mail. I have to say, I'm not sure I can bring myself to use it. It's really nice lace. And I'm kind of thinking, oh, do I want to use that or would I prefer to hoard it? Yeah, I can't help but think I would probably prefer to hoard it. But it does look really gorgeous on there, doesn't it? Oh, I'm going to have to just use it, to be honest, because it looks really pretty. Okay, let's just do that. So, I mean, actually, this lace, I'm obviously putting down the middle. So, in fairness, you know, this didn't need stitching at all because the lace has just gone exactly where the stitching would have been. You know, looks absolutely lovely. So if you don't have, you know, a sewing machine, you don't have a stamp that you could use, you don't want to kind of draw on some stitching or anything like that. As you can see, you could just run some lace down the middle. You could run some ribbon down the middle, to be fair. And, you know, that just looks absolutely gorgeous. Just like, you know, just like that, doesn't it? So, yeah, I've swapped these around now because I thought actually this is really nice to keep it sort of neutral with that gorgeous butterfly so just going to help this down because it's not obviously glued on that edge so just attach that butterfly there okie dokie and then we'll have this one just here I think okay There we go. And I'm just going, whoops, just going to put some bling on those to kind of finish them off, I think. So let me just grab some bling. Oh, my lovely container that was gifted to me by the lovely Brenda. <laughs> it's now swimming in things because I'm like midway through another project that I've been doing the videos for. And, um, yeah, in order to obviously do my mass making, I just piled it all up on there. So it's now sort of covered up. Where I had been really good at keeping it very neat and tidy, so I'm a bit irritated with myself. But having said that, it literally, I just piled it up just now, you know, just to do the mass making. So it's not like it's living that way. It's just literally for this duration of this video. Okay, so that's that. How pretty does that look? Whoops. Sorry, just getting rid of my hot glue threads down there from the side. And then this one, again, so we could just have the centre of the butterfly. I mean, we could have some lace on the, or some bling on the lace. I think in the butterfly it's nicest, actually. Might just need to make that a smaller piece. So more like three three diamantes rather than four because otherwise that's quite big on there yeah that just looks a little bit better so oops and next week of course is half term for the children so um yeah I might try and do my mass making video before the Monday just in case I don't get time to do it on the Monday. There we 
like it. So, I mean, to be honest, I'm kind of thinking they don't really need anything else. I mean, yeah, initially I was thinking I'd put maybe some flowers on or something, but to be honest, they look really lovely as they are. And, you know, I don't think they really even need anything um, extra on there. I will just quickly have a look and just check, but, you know, I think they're just gorgeous in their simple, you know, their simple forms, but... Yeah, I think they look lovely. I mean, actually, I do think the flower looks nice on there. But what I'm going to do is probably leave them blank like that. And then when I come to use them, obviously, if I'm doing something that needs flowers, I can do that. And the others I will leave blank completely because, you know, like we always say, I like to leave all my mass makes as blank pieces, really, because then when I come to use them, that's how I get the most versatile use out of them is to then pull them in undecorated and then I can tie them in with whatever project it is that I'm doing. Um, just to quite quickly demonstrate, if you've got some ribbon or anything, so I'm just having a quick look through my ribbons here to the side of me. Now, this is not going to match this at all, um, but just to kind of demonstrate, you could just kind of put some ribbon down the middle and that would give you an alternative to the stitching. So I'm trying to think if I've got anything that this is going to go with. I don't think I really did any that's going to complement this. Although I did do the plain one with the sheet music and book page. So I just take that. So you could do that. I mean, you could staple it on like a sort of ruffle down the middle or something like that. Um, you know, so play around. I think they've got a lot of different, um, you know, options and kind of scope for them. So... Yeah, I hope that you like them and, um, you know, super fun way to just use up some scraps and obviously just super simple and easy. And then, you know, how cute does that look just on a page? Just super simple, but really, really cute. So, yeah, I hope that you like them and thank you so much for joining me. And hopefully I won't be um, uploading too many videos this week by mistake or anything. Um, thank you so much, everyone, and see you all again soon. Thanks then. Bye.